Hey guys, there's Soft Tech here and welcome back. Today we'll be doing another episode of Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A. So if you don't know how Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A works, it's fairly simple. I make a community post on YouTube asking people to ask me questions for the coming episode of Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A. And then I usually pick the most liked or the ones that I find the most interesting and then answer those. So let's just jump straight into it and answer your all's most popular and most interesting questions. Mr. Cactus Jones asks, how do you make an AEG quieter? So there are definitely some ways you can make your AEG a lot quieter. Uh, the first place I like to start is actually with maintenance and tuning. Make sure that your shimming is absolutely on point. Perfect shimming is very quiet, um, so I would definitely start there. Second place I would go is making a very kind of quick system. So like, you know, 12 to one or 13 to one gears pair with a high TPA motor, or you can even do like 18 to one gears with a 14 or 16 TPA motor, basically something that gets you a very, very quick cycle time so that you don't have a whole lot of whining and grinding of the gears actually working. So the quicker tends to be the quieter in this case. Another thing you can do is actually under slightly under volume your setup. And so most volume ratios are gonna be 1.5 to one on your cylinder to vol uh, barrel volume ratio. If you over volume like two to one or even 2.5 or three to one on your barrel uh, cylinder to barrel volume ratio, you make your gun very loud. So if you decrease that ratio, do like 1.2 to one or even 1.1 to one, even though you're gonna be losing quite a bit of you know, volume for that BB to push, it's gonna make your gun very quiet when the BB exits the barrel. Another thing you can do is actually AOE correct with you know, a sorbothane pad. That's a pretty marginal, uh, slight, slight change in overall noise that your AEG creates, but it does help a little bit. And lastly, the one thing you can do is actually kind of pack the dead space areas of your gun with sorbothane or other sh thin sheets of foam in the upper receiver between the gearbox shell and where the hop-up chamber is. You can kind of pack some in there. That's kind of gimmicky, but it does cut down on sound a little bit. So if you really want to make an ultra silent AEG, you can do all of those things and then you would have yourself quite uh, the quiet gun. And also you can actually you know, do a foam filled suppressor. I've never done it before. I'm unsure of the laws there. I just know that there are some legal things that you got to keep in mind when you, when you do actually build a foam filled suppressor. So that's something you can do. Obviously follow your local laws. Soapy asks, how are the master mods doing? I'm questioning using them in my build. So the master mods parts are actually doing really well. Um, I'm really pleased with the way those uh, parts are performing. Um, so I actually have those installed in my TSG base gun here. Now this is not my actual TSG, this is just the TSG base gun. Um, long story short, I tried to get my TSG working and I broke a significant component of the uh, build. And so I had to kind of change things up a bit for a game I was going to. Basically, I turned my TSG base gun into a over volume uh, single center gear build. And I used a lot of the master mods parts, you know, the cylinder head, the air nozzle, and the piston. And I mean, they're good parts and they're working totally fine. My air seal was really good with the cylinder head and the, and the, and the air seal nozzle. And the piston is really what I like. It's got a lot of pickup tooth reinforcement. Um, it's got a lot of strength to it. I did lighten it quite a bit by Swiss cheesing it up a whole lot in anticipation of actually using it in, in my TSG build. Uh, but again, that didn't quite happen yet. I'm still working out uh, how I'm gonna go about doing that. Um, but no, I think they're working fairly well. Um, the barrel and the R hop setup is actually really good too. I didn't get to play like an actual airsoft game using the uh, inner barrel and hop up chamber setup, but I did shoot it a little bit at a field I went to recently and you know, really good, especially with heavyweight BBs, you're getting really good range, really good accuracy, really good consistency. It's a really nice setup and I think it does the whole R-hop drop-in concept really well. So would I recommend the parts? Yes, only if you want to spend a little bit of extra money to get high quality parts that also have a good, that, that also appear to have a good quality control um, situation as well. So the way, the way I've told people about them uh, is that they're, they're a little bit better than SHS quality, uh, but they're significantly better in the quality control. So you just get a better part and you get more consistently better parts as well. Michael Skrzewski asks, in your opinion, is the R-Hop still, still worth doing if there are drop-in solutions like maple leaf buckings? Absolutely. R-Hop is still the 
in my opinion, is still the absolute best accuracy slash, accuracy slash range modification upgrade you can make to your airsoft gun. Um, a perfectly done R hop is going to be the best solution to range and accuracy and consistency as well. So, you know, I really prefer R hop. I've done a lot of the maple leaf. I've seen the reaps buckings. I've seen all these different types of buckings that all these different types of manufacturers make. And still none of them really kind of come close to a perfectly tuned R hop. And that's just really because all of these different buckings are pretty much trying to do the same thing, but from a drop in approach. And a drop in approach is never gonna be as good as a finely and intimately tuned R hop patch to a specific barrel bucking and hop up chamber setup. Um, basically anything perfectly custom made is going to tend to be a lot better than anything that's manufactured for a one size fits all. So uh, I definitely think that R hop is probably the absolute best accuracy, range, consistency, hop up upgrade that you can make to your airsoft gun. And if you want to push it even further, you can do IR hop and you can do a top down center mod to R hop or IR hop to make your accuracy and range even that much more consistent. Broomstick asks, is the T238 MOSFET working good? So this wasn't the most popular question uh, amongst all the questions, but it was asked frequently enough that I feel like I owed a response. So the T238 MOSFET is a uh, airsoft and gel blaster trigger unit MOSFET um, made by Rousefire or Rosefire. It's a uh, airsoft China gel blaster manufacturer. And um, essentially, like I said, it works with both setups. And so it's a fairly cheap MOSFET with a lot of different features that are advertised for, you know, active braking, pre-cocking, burst fire, uh, trigger delay firing, battery per or battery protection, all this kind of stuff that comes with most uh, high-end MOSFETs like Gate, BTC, and the works like that. Uh, essentially, this, this MOSFET was marketed as a extremely cheap Airsoft China manufactured MOSFET. You could get them for $30 to $35 on uh, AliExpress. And uh, it was pretty much supposed to be, you know, the go-to upgrade for, uh, or go-to replacement for gate and BTC on a significantly cheaper level. Um, the problem is, is that the way I was told by a couple, a couple people that are close with Rosefire is that there's a fairly high lemon rate, approximately one in 20. Um, and that's pretty much how it works whenever you buy airsoft stuff from China. A lot of the time, you know, it's gonna work great. Then the other part of the time, it's gonna not work at, at all. And so I bought this MOSFET with the purpose of it being in my TSG build. And I put the whole gun together, tuned it appropriately, made sure that the sector gear was fitting within the MOSFET appropriately and that the MOSFET was fitting fine in the gearbox shown and, and all the stuff that I normally do. And I put the whole gun together and cycled it a couple times and it cycled great for about five minutes. And then it just, the MOSFET broke in the open position, which means that the, as soon as you plug in the battery, it would just automatically fire your gun. Uh, that's pretty much how MOSFETs break. Um, so at this point, I cannot recommend the T238 MOSFET. I just have not had good experience with it. And so I cannot really recommend in good faith that other people go out and spend their money on something that I've not been able to get to work either. So uh, like I said, uh, at this time, I cannot recommend the T238 MOSFET until these uh, kind of quality control issues are sorted out. All right, guys, that's all the time I have today to answer questions. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe to see more Airsoft tech-themed content. Also, if you're looking for ways to help support the channel, you can go check out the Teespring store where I have Jewel Creep and DSG-themed merchandise. I think you guys would really like it if you wanted to go check it out. As always, thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. As always, leave a comment down below about how I can go about improving the quality of these videos for you guys. But that'll have to do it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever the heck I'm doing. But until then, stay tuned, Tex.